Hello guys and welcome once again to my channel. My name is Tony Chef Francis. This is your first time on this channel. Please subscribe and turn on the notification button. Alright, so today I want to give a form of information as regards the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. Now, while reading some things on the internet today, I realized that there's been some form of news going here and there about how to test yourself. Um, for coronavirus and of course this um, this test or these claims are not really true as they claim to be all right so so i went on the internet and i realized that there's been a form of information all right going around as regards how to test yourself for the covid19 virus Right. So, um, a case is a recent viral coronavirus self-check, um, simple self-check test, uh, which medical experts, of course, have said is completely inaccurate. Now, first of all, I went straight to CNN's um, website. All right, I'm going to show you a video very soon uh, where an expert was interviewed uh, by CNN. All right, and so I got his article transcribed based on what I watched from that video and what's on the site. So this is not something that uh, Tolusha made up, not at all. This is something said by experts, all right? Now, so it says it was written on what appears to be uh, the iPhone Note app, all right? And the three-part post, right, claims that people can find out whether they have coronavirus simply by holding their breath for more than 10 seconds. How can you even ask people to check something by holding their breath for more than 10 seconds. I don't get it. And then you're saying that you can hold your breath for that long without coughing, then it means that you don't have the virus. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. With my little knowledge, even though I am not a medical doctor, with my knowledge of science, all right, there is no way you test yourself by holding your breath to check if you have uh, a viral infection or not. And trust now, this uh, this began on Twitter and of course got to Facebook and some people started getting emails, all right, and it was actually credited to a member of a particular hospital bus, Stanford to be precise, uh, but again, um, a spokesperson from Stanford Healthcare, um, Lisa Kim, told CNN, of course, that the dangerous post is not affiliated with the institution or the hospital bus, so they have distanced themselves from that. However, let's go now to debunk this, and of course, here I'm going to talk to Dr. Robert Legaro. Dr. Robert Legaro Atma, of course, who is an infectious disease specialist at Baylor College of Medicine. Now, let's look at this myth one after the other. So, they said drinking water will protect you from the virus. This is not true at all. Alright, so this is a myth that doesn't exist. Okay, it doesn't exist anywhere there is no place that this that drinking of water will protect you from the virus so what's the so they are claiming that if you don't drink enough water regularly the virus can enter your windpipe and into your lungs come on people don't believe such things all right don't believe such things and the person was saying that you drink water every 15 minutes to wash the virus down through your throat is this some form of food that is stuck and where is the acid? And they are saying that the acid will kill the virus. Where is the acid in water? Water is a universal solvent, all right? So the truth of the matter is that there is no evidence, right, according to Dr. Atma, there is no evidence from any respiratory viruses that proves that this approach works. And of course, even if it works, all right, there is no way uh, this virus will still not go through because from your nose, Right, we still breathe through our nose, not just our mouth. So we still have it go through our nose. All right. So this would only be possible if it was going to protect the nose as well. But of course, yeah, they are talking about the mouth and the windpipe. But I mean, <laughs> they just didn't get their facts right. Now the next one is that. Uh, let me not use this color so you can see what I'm trying to do here. Now the next one uh, is that you should gargle water all right so they are saying that you should gargle water and that and salt and it will prevent the virus so you know this salt in warm water so they are saying that put salt in warm water all right gargle it and then to solve this but hey that's not true that's a blatant lie all right it will not do anything at all 
all right? But based on data again, salt water cannot work for this. So this is myth number two, the bunk by Dr. Hartman. Now I'm bringing this to you because it's important that we keep informing ourselves. It's important that we keep keeping ourselves abreast of situations so we don't get carried away by what someone just sits somewhere and puts together. And you know, social media is funny these days. Things go viral fast, like shady fake news and, and um, irrelevant and untruthful stuff, right? So this is why I'm bringing you this information, all right? Not just something cooked from the books. Now the next one, like I mentioned earlier, says if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, then you're okay. So they are saying that take a deep breath and hold your breath for more than 10 seconds that if you completely successfully without coughing, without discomfort, stiffness or tightness, it moves that a no fibrosis in your lungs, all right? And of course, um, an indication of infection is fibrosis. But the truth of the matter is this is not true, all right? When you have an acute viral infection, it will be difficult for you to hold the breath, okay? And um, being able to hold your breath for 10 seconds doesn't mean that you don't have coronavirus. Right, so if you will be able to hold your breath for 10 seconds, it doesn't mean that the virus is not there, right? It doesn't say anything at all, right? But of course, it's a clear sign, it's usually a sign for people with fibrosis that they find that they find it difficult to hold their breath, all right? And that's because the respiratory or it affects the respiratory tract, right? There's tightness in there. But hey, the fact that you are not able to hold your breath for 10 seconds doesn't mean you have coronavirus. Now, the next one says, if you have a runny nose, it's just cold. That also isn't true, right? So, they are saying that if you have a runny nose and sputum, you have a common cold. Coronavirus pneumonia is dry cough with no runny nose. But, hey, that's also not completely true. A runny nose can be a symptom of the flu, allergies, or other illnesses. And, of course, while many patients do have a dry cough, those with coronavirus pneumonia also have had or could have a productive or wet cough which produces phlegm, another name for sputum. Now, what this means is basically that yes, it is possible that a patient, all right, um, with coronavirus may even have um, coronavirus pneumonia specifically this time around, may have productive or wet cough, all right. So, it's not also a sign the fact that your cough is dry but there is no running nose doesn't mean that you can uh, doesn't mean that you have corona virus all right now the next one is they are saying that if you have corona virus you will have pneumonia hmm they are saying that the virus blends into a nasa flu that enters the trachea and then the lungs all right mm -hmm. causing pneumonia and the post also said that the virus first infects the throat which will give patients a sore throat for three to four days before blending into a nasal flu. Now, this is also not entirely accurate. The time sequence for coronavirus symptoms vary from patient to patient. And it's also said that not all patients will have sore throat. So it is not every patient or everyone who is down with coronavirus that would have sore throat. So let's be guided. Let's get our facts right. Let's not get carried away by false or fake news. The next myth says that coronavirus patients will experience a drowning sensation, right? These guys are saying that nasal congestion is not like the normal kind of, you feel like you're drowning. You know, you know that feeling when you're drowning, yeah. That's what they're saying here. But hey, the Katma says it's not true, right? That um, does not sound like any respiratory virus people are infected with. And many patients with coronavirus have not had nasal infection at all. Do you get that? So there is no draining sensation that comes with coronavirus. All right? So it means that not necessarily do you have a nasal problem, all right, when you have coronavirus. Now, this will blow your mind. Now, this is saying that by the time a person with coronavirus is hospitalized, their lungs will have experienced fibrosis, right? They are saying that by the time you have fever or cough or go to the hospital, your lungs are already 50% fibrotic and it is too late. But that's not true, all right? Because fibrosis only develops in the minority of patients. And 80% of coronavirus patients experience only the mild symptoms of the disease. Now, the incubation period for coronavirus is 
2 to 14 days. And symptoms usually begin with 5 to 6 days of exposure, with the first week including a cough, sore throat, fever, and muscle aches. Only the minority of patients will experience the second week of severe respiratory symptoms and may be at risk of fibrosis. While the coronavirus is an issue everyone in the world should be taken seriously, the spread of information can both be dangerous and deadly. Right, so if you're not sure, okay, if something you are reading really about coronavirus is correct, the best thing to do is to check with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention or check with your local health authority, right, to confirm, do not assume that something is wrong with you, all right? Do not get um, swayed, do not get moved, do not get sad that to think that something is wrong with you. So I'm going to play the video, all right, of the interview with Dr. Atmar by CNN, and I hope that you pick something from this video and from what I have shared with you today. Again, this is just my own contribution to the coronavirus pandemic going on. Like I said, I'll be bringing you updates and I'll also be bringing you information as regards how to take care of yourself. I guess I'm going to do something on anxiety in moments like this soon, uh, maybe um, very soon. All right. So um, just a minute and you will see the video. Plenty of water. It's always good to stay hydrated, medical experts say. But as for the idea that drinking more water will flush coronavirus from your system. We don't know if the oral fecal route is an important mode of transmission, but uh, water will not uh, flush virus out of the system. The notion that drinking more water will flush coronavirus from your system is one of several myths about the virus circulating on social media. Myths that experts are eager to dispel tonight. Another prominent myth, that if you hold your breath for more than 10 seconds without coughing or discomfort, you don't have fibrosis, a sign of infection in the lungs. Is holding your breath for 10 seconds some kind of a barometer? Fibrosis in your lungs is scarring in your lung tissue. And no, there's no, there's no barometer like that. Again, if you have any respiratory distress, if you have any shortness of breath, if you have a fever, if you have any of the respiratory symptoms, you need to pick up the phone and call a medical provider and tell them what those symptoms are. Another myth, that young people and children can't get coronavirus. We know that children and adolescents, yes, they can indeed uh, contract this coronavirus, but for reasons that we don't understand, they don't seem to be getting as sick as older individuals or those who are debilitated. But experts say children and adolescents are also potential transmitters of coronavirus. There's another popular notion floating around that the warmer weather approaching will either make the virus recede or go away. Experts say there have been previous virus outbreaks that have peaked in the winter, then declined. But they say with coronavirus, we haven't gone through a whole year of it yet, so we don't know if the summer weather will help. Don't rely on temperature or humidity to inactivate or kill this virus. The way that you kill and inactivate this virus is by proper cleaning and disinfection. There's another myth out there, that coronavirus can be transmitted through the mail. Experts say, judging by previous similar viruses, they don't stay alive for long on surfaces or objects. The likelihood of risk of getting the virus from uh, the mail is pretty low. Remember, especially a lot of mail is flown by uh, aircraft which is under pretty harsh conditions. But if you have any doubts, there's no harm in first wiping that package down uh, with either Clorox wipes or alcohol wipes, uh, and that will uh, ensure that it's safe to open.